So just to start out with um, the axes of the HR diagram, my first question for you is just simply, which variables are plotted on the diagram? All right, looks like most of you have voted for D, temperature and luminosity. And that's exactly right. So those are the two variables. And so my next question for you is, uh, which one of these lives on the vertical axis and which way does the vertical axis increase? Okay, so I'm seeing most votes for B, that the luminosity lives on the vertical axis and it increases going up and that's exactly right. So then that leaves us with only two choices for the horizontal axis. We know it has to be temperature, so which direction does that axis increase? All right, a slight majority is saying B, which is correct. And it may be unexpected that the temperature increases to the left. Usually when we have an XY graph of some kind, both axes increase um, you know, away from some central point. But for the HR diagram, that's not the case. Um, that's because we're organizing really by color. And so the temperature increases to the left with bluer stars on the left of the diagram and redder stars on the right. Um, the luminosity axis is usually communicated in terms of the luminosity of the sun. And this little symbol that's a circle with a dot inside of it that represents the sun. So one L uh, with that little circle symbol is the luminosity of the sun. And here, um, if I were to draw uh, equal spaced uh, tick marks on the luminosity axis, they would not be linearly spaced like I'm showing here. The distance between the markings would not be, you know, something where I could say 20, 40, 60. Uh, the luminosity axis and the temperature axis in the HR diagram are both logarithmic. So what does that actually mean? It means that if I was going to draw equally spaced marks, then the distance between those markings would be some power of 10. So instead of the distance being, for example, you know, five or 20 or 60 or something like that, it's gonna be either, uh, you know, 10 to the one, so 10, or 10 to the two, or 10 to the four, something like that. So um, just to kind of practice with this idea, because it's kind of weird, let's say that I had two stars let's say that I have some blue star that has a luminosity of 10 to the minus two L sun and some yellow star that has a luminosity of 10 to the two. I think in real life, these would be reversed, but ignore that for now. Um, just using the luminosities as it's measured on the Y axis here, how many more times more luminous would the yellow star be than the blue star? And now I'm seeing most votes for E that there is a difference of 10,000 times in the luminosity of those two stars. So uh, that can be a little bit hard to see right off the bat. So let me try to illustrate this. If I draw my you know, line back to the axis for both of these stars, one star is at 10 to the plus two um, L sun and the other one's at 10 to the minus two L sun. The difference between those then is a factor of 10 to the four if the distance between every tick mark is a factor of 10 to the two, um, they actually multiply together to give, get us a 10 to the four difference. And so 10 to the four is 10,000. So that's where that's coming from. So it might be a little bit unfamiliar um, that there is a logarithmic axis, but the you know, utility of this is you can get a really wide range of data onto a small graph. So we have to do that because stars just have a wide range of luminosities. All right, the temperature axis gives us the same problem. It's not linear either. And the reason for that is that the HR diagram is really organized by spectral class. So our hot O and B type uh, blue stars are at the left side and our cool red uh, K and M type stars are at the right side. And uh, just nature is you know, not that tidy. And so the spectral classes of stars are not evenly distributed by temperature. That's just the way it is. So we can pick out a few kind of key temperatures um, that kind of align sometimes with the interfaces between two classes. So for example, the A0 type stars are 10,000 Kelvin, the G0 type stars are 6,000 Kelvin. Um, but in general, you shouldn't expect a, you know, a given distance on the temperature axis to mean a given change in temperature. Okay, so um, when we actually do put all of our uh, stars on the HR diagram. This is basically what it looks like. And there's a few patterns that you can um, pick out right away. So there's a big diagonal um, chunk of stars that runs from the top left to the bottom right. And then there's a couple of clumps 
up to the upper right and one clump down at the lower left. And because these correspond with temperature, you could overlay if you wanted to a color chart onto the entire diagram. And I think this is maybe a useful thing to keep in mind because what it means is actually that if you consider the location of each star on the diagram, that directly tells you what its color is. So um, try to remember if you can, as we go through today, that the stars on the left are blue, the stars on the right are red. And in general, I think those are more useful ways to describe a star than um, you know, their exact spectral class. So when you're describing a star's position on the HR diagram today in the activity, use words like blue, red, hot, cool, bright, and dim. All right, so you don't have to turn to the technical language. We want to get used to talking to stars in a really familiar way.